Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Being. And I am here today with James, who is a survivor of narcissistic abuse. Hello, James. Hi. How's it going? Pretty good. good. How are you? I'm good. Um, one topic that's been coming up is there's an increasing number of men in the community who are reaching out for support. Yep. And um, one thing is that some of the men may have fear when they are um, trying to talk about or even speak about their experience. Is that something you've seen? I've kind of, it's been my experience, um, especially Anything? right after um, our relationship ended. It, uh, it was tough because <laughs> you have nobody in person to speak to because mm -hmm. nobody or very, it's very unlikely that anybody will understand, especially other men. And what's you, it like if you try to speak to other men? Like that you're uh, You get called certain names that can't be spoken on YouTube or a mm -hmm. wimp or right. they tell you, uh, oh, just, um, just put her in her place and don't let her do it to you. And, and you try to say things like, um, well, if I were to try to do that, about the only thing that would happen is she would leave and go do it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But it's not really, I mean, it's stopping the abuse, but it's not stopping the behavior. Right. There's no, you can't make a narc do anything. No. Or a toxic not, person. You can't, you right. can't at all. And it's not validating your, your experience. Right. The abuse. It's very right. invalidating. Right. So how did you, how did you come to find support? And, and what would you say to people who are maybe afraid to reach out? I think it started with um, it started with a Google search, and I think I typed something like, um, "Why is my wife mean to me?" <laughs> or "Why does she yell at me?" or something silly like that. Mm -hmm. And I found Patricia Evans and um, a few other uh, a few YouTube personalities um, mm -hmm. like Angie and um, Richard Grannon, and then from there I just started reading as many books as I could mm -hmm. and it, it was like a furious thing for like the first probably six months when I first discovered it and I just started trying to be a part of the live streams as much as possible and ask questions and get validated because another wrinkle in it is you you, you think sometimes that you may be the toxic person right because there's there's a stigma of, um, uh, I guess, more men being narcissist or toxic. Mm -hmm. So, and then from the things that she used to say to me, it it kind of makes you think. Like you, it it wears on you after a while. Right. It's it's tough. So. Right. And so you think that some men may be afraid to speak out because they may feel like they're the toxic one. When, toxic women have a way of taking away the the man's voice altogether mm -hmm. um so when when you get conditioned that way it affects all parts of your life mm -hmm. you start thinking well nobody wants to hear what i have to say and or nobody's gonna believe me and I, i'm just being a, a wimp or i'm being too sensitive whatever else things like that because it's what it's things that we hear from them over and over again. Right. After a while, you believe it. Okay, so they use your sensitivity against you. Pretty much. That's Isn't it interesting that that it's true that we, women, you know, look for sensitive men, but a narco look for a sensitive man for a different reason. Completely different reason. Completely yeah, that's different true. reason. And what are some ways that they totally abuse your sensitivity? Well, okay, for example. Um, when she's sick, it was like dealing with like a toddler mm -hmm. as far as like the way that she would act and, and, you know, I mean, you're sick, you're not feeling good. You're going to be, you're going to whine sometimes. And that, that may sound bad, but so, you know, I'm, I would try to be extra sweet and I don't know, bring her ice cream or bring right. her food to bed and, and just, kind of comfort her and things like that you know just try to be there for as much as i can mm -hmm. to make her feel better. but anytime i would be sick it was like oh just just go lay down in your room 
Mm. Basically, like, get away from me. Mm-hmm. And I understand that a lot of men are um, <laughs> kind of, uh, when we're sick, sometimes we can we can act a little childish, too, as far, just because I don't think we can take being sick as well for whatever reason. Um, so that's that's one way. Another way is I would find myself um, like in a movie if mm-hmm. it's something that's sad to me and I'm, I feel myself trying to cry, I would try really hard to hide it or keep myself from crying because mm-hmm. you get you I would get ridiculed for crying mm-hmm. in front okay. of her and um so any kind of emotion you show that is remotely on the not what a manly so to speak, yeah. manly man right anything on the softer sides or on the more emotional side would be ridiculed right so the sensitivity being attacked and ridiculed and all of that must have shut down that a little bit for you or what did that how did that affect you it makes you numb and numb? Um, yeah like the first month or two i don't know i just felt like i was on a planet by myself mm-hmm. and it felt like it was like you were floating all the time like you're you're an autopilot to the point where it, you're just you're basically just existing every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I didn't really want to do anything or leave the house. Or, and I don't know. It was, it was a weird, it was a weird time. It, um, so when you reach back out, when you reached out for help, you said you found videos and stuff. Did you find support mm-hmm. groups or what? Um, Both both okay and how was it as a guy how was it trying to speak out once once i was validated a few times by because i've had i had phone conversations with um patricia evans Mm -hmm. and um she she had told me that it's it's not as likely but she has definitely had other men call her and tell her similar stories Mm -hmm. so once once you get validated a few times whether it be message boards or um, Facebook groups or live streams or even comments on YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. It, it lets you know that, you know, Oh, I do have a voice. I I can speak out and it's, it's not just me. And um, seeing a couple other men on YouTube was a huge help It because you really feel like you're, you feel like you're the only guy in the world that 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 has been through this and can possibly understand it right it's very you feel very alone right i've heard this from other male survivors i've heard it from men that i've coached and men that you know in in group in support groups similar that that it because that they don't have the the infrastructure in their social lives to be able to go to a guy friend that it just feels really like you're alone so I mean, it's alone for women too. We have a similar experience, but it is a lot easier to go to a girlfriend and say what's going on and right. get it at least on some level. I have one, one of my best friends that I've known forever. He, he was pretty good about it, but it, it's not the same till you get the validation, I think. Right. It's not as deep of a validation, if that makes sense, because you, you, yeah. He's not going to understand it on the same level as somebody that's actually been through it. Mm -hmm. But he, I mean, he did see a few situations and behaviors Mm -hmm. like firsthand, but he didn't see the behind the closed, behind closed doors um, behavior that was just completely ridiculous. So until, until the uh, YouTube comments and stuff like that, I wasn't really able to to speak out as much. So what I didn't you, feel comfortable. What would you say to a to a man, to any man listening here, um, that might help them uh, seek support or feel more secure reaching out? That there there's there's nothing wrong with um, you as a person or as a guy. 
it, find it's his normal mind. to feel like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's nothing wrong with a guy that at a that sense of I found myself wanting to help her mm -hmm. you know have a better a better life and make her happy and the the old saying of um happy wife happy life mm -hmm. is completely false so it's I mean it's it's probably more common than they than they think mm -hmm. so I guess the the main thing I would say is that they're not, you're not alone. You're, you're there's, there's probably a lot more men in your in a similar situation than you, than you realize. Right. I, I really believe that. I think we're just scratching the surface on how many abusive women there are and toxic women in the world. Mm -hmm. Um. there's, I mean, there's a lot of men that are, but there's also a lot of women, but it's, they're kind of hiding in the shadows. They have that, the veil of, um, you know, the same thing as uh, like a, like a domestic disturbance. If the cops are called mm -hmm. and it's, they can't tell either way, they're probably going to look at the guy and, and think that he's the, the, uh, the perpetrator. He's the, right. the bad guy. Because our society has a bias. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm so right okay so you think just to um keep keep watching the live streams check out places like span yeah. and right yeah read watch as many videos as you want read as many books as you can get your hands on participate in as many groups as you can get on on facebook mm -hmm. um, just be part of the community it's it's a very welcoming community and Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to laugh at you um, or ridicule you unless, unless they're toxic themselves. And right. that'll be taken care of uh, swiftly. Right. So. Good. And I'd love to start a coaching group for men. So hopefully that'll be in the yeah. future too. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it would be good just because um, every once in a while there's, there's a moment where I want to say something, but yeah, I feel like I need to be, extra careful because right. well, yeah, that's, you don't want to sense. trigger anybody and right. men think sometimes differently. Okay. <laughs> so Yeah, it could be a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you, James. It was good to talk to you and we'll talk again, hopefully next week or something. Yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.